All right, overseas now, there is a growing awareness that the proxy war in Ukraine is being fuelled by interests that, frankly, care more about destroying Russia than saving Ukraine. My position on this war hasn't been popular, I know that. But more people are now seeing that, the effectively, what, that this war effectively began with the US-backed coup of 2014. That saw the replacement of the Ukrainian government. Since then, ethnic Russians have been targeted by neo-Nazi groups operating under sanction by the Ukraine government. There were terrible atrocities recorded that led to headlines like these. In one media account from 2014, a member of the notorious Azov Battalion claimed that Nazis were happy to fight Russia because, quote, Putin is a Jew. The list of atrocities committed in the pre-war civil war was appalling. And that's not to say it was all one way. It certainly wasn't. A war takes two sides to fight. But the promise of peace and a vote on autonomy for the principally Russian areas of Ukraine via the Minsk agreement, they've never materialised. And in fact, former German Chancellor Angela Merkel admitted the agreement was simply a means of buying time to allow the Ukrainian military to grow stronger. Then there's also the matter of the relentless creep of NATO toward the Russian border that the Russians have expressed so much concern about over a very long time. One non-negotiable pillar of Russian national security was that Ukraine was to remain a neutral country. And yet both President Zelensky and US Vice President Kamala Harris endorse, endorsed Ukraine joining NATO. The troops were massed on the border already. It was like a red rag to the bull. And the bull charged, pushing troops over the border and into the current dispute that we have. I've never bought into the narrative that Russia wants to conquer Europe, or nor that Putin is a madman. And in many respects, his approach to a lot of contemporary issues is more rational and calculated than a lot of Western leaders. And for those out there who say, who are critical of Russian disinformation about this war, well, you're right, there is disinformation. But hold off from throwing those stones because you're living in a glass house. Have a look at the propaganda being pushed by Western media and Ukrainian disinformation services. And while the West seems happy to perpetuate this conflict by throwing military weapons, munitions and ordinances at Ukraine, they also deny it's a proxy war between US neocons and their aggressive foreign policy versus their perpetual adversary, Russia. They've never let go of the Cold War. If this was really about one country taking land from another or invading another for that matter, then every US citizen would be sanctioned and the US billionaires would have had all of their assets seized just like the Russians have. Now, again, I know this view isn't popular with those who cannot think past the headlines, but more and more people are coming to the conclusion that many Western leaders, most notably the US and the UK, show no interest in stopping this war. But I have to say their indignant squawking reached new absurdities this week when a Russian fighter doused a US drone in fuel then clipped its propeller to cause it to crash. The drone, of course, was capable of carrying Hellfire missiles. I do not know whether it was carrying them or not, and the question as to whether the drone was in international airspace or over Russian territory, that entirely depends on which side you want to listen to. However, the complaint from the US European Command was reported in the Australian as thus. Several times before the collision, the SU-27s dumped fuel on and flew in front of the MQ-9 in a reckless, environmentally unsound and unprofessional manner. All right, the thing that got me here was the environmentally unsound claim, like, ooh, that's the biggest sin in war. I presume that's a result of the fuel dump. Now, this is from the government that is credibly reported as blowing up the Nord Stream gas pipeline, which did cause an environmentally catastrophic gas leak. I make the point the US denies the claim, but not many intelligent people actually believe those denials. But this is the reality of the West today. They're concerned about the environmental actions of an attack on a drone, but unconcerned by the bombing of a pipeline, all the tens of thousands of bombs and rockets they're hurling around in this conflict. The environmentally unsound consequences of war only seem to matter when it suits the narrative. I've got to ask you, what about the loss of life too? To hell with the hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian troops and conscripts that are being sacrificed at the behest of the US and their allies. Now, we keep being told that Ukraine is winning this war. Maybe they are. Or maybe they'll run out of people to fight it before the US runs out of weapons to fuel it.
However you consider this, this conflict is a catastrophe in the making and it could easily have been avoided. Unfortunately, those in charge seem to have little interest in peace and that's creating a huge problem for us all. The Russia-Ukraine conflict is already a global conflict. It has the potential to bring us to World War III. I say it's time to remove the neocon warhawks from the equation and find a diplomatic resolution. The alternative scenario is too horrific to contemplate.